I'm Lacey from No Filter Beauty and welcome to Hair Topper School where I'm going to hold your hand through the transition from thinning hair to wearing hair. Looking for your first topper can be an overwhelming experience. <laughs> Do you go with a mono top or a silk top? What color should you get? What company has the best return policy? Which one's going to look the most natural? Uh, there's a lot of questions, but let me simplify this for you in just a few steps. The first step is to decide on your budget. Now, I think a lot of people are really surprised at how much human hair toppers cost. So I'm just gonna give you a ballpark of what you maybe need to be saving up for. Depending on the length of your hair, toppers can range anywhere from like 300-ish all the way up to like two grand. So of course, the shorter, the cheaper for the most part. Uh, but that's just a place to start. And if that's totally overwhelming and just like you're never going to make it, that's okay. Just make a goal, save up, be patient. <laughs> if you really don't want to wait, um, another option is to get a synthetic hair topper to start. They're a lot more affordable. However, some people get them and then swear off hair toppers forever because they don't love it. Um, so if that's the case, just be patient and know that a synthetic topper is not a human hair topper, so it's not gonna look the same. And keep saving. <laughs> the second thing you're gonna want to decide is the cap construction that you're looking for. So by that I mean what is the base of your topper made out of. There are a few different kinds that are very common. One of them is a lace front. Um, so basically what that is, is a fine mesh that will, it'll come long and you'll have to trim it to match your hairline but it doesn't have any clips in the front, which is really good for severe hair loss if you're very thinning through the front. So it doesn't damage your hair as much. Um, it will need to be glued on. So you'll have to decide if that's something that you're willing to put up with is gluing or taping. Um, but that's, that's a lace front topper. A lot of them will have wefting. So this one has, you can tell like in the, the middle part area, is a mono top, which we'll talk about in a second, with the lace in the front. So this is lace, this is mono top. And then in the back, it's wefting. And so the wefting looks like this. You can imagine like if you had clip-in hair extensions, they're just kind of like a, a track of hair. There we go. <laughs> so this is, this is wefting. Um, it means like it won't just lay any which way, it'll just lay down the way it's sewn onto the cap, which for most people in the back, they don't, they don't mind. <laughs> so that's the lace front with some wefting. A monotop is just a very fine mesh on top. Um, a lot of times people think they're not quite as realistic in the scalp area, that's because you can usually see the knots of where the hair is tied. Um, however, they are very light, so the, they're not as hot, um, they're not as heavy usually, and sometimes they can be more affordable. So that's a mono top. There are ways to make them look a little bit more realistic. Uh, I have a video all about that, but you can try to make the part look a little bit more like your bio hair. There we go. <laughs> uh, but that's a mono top. A silk top is the most realistic looking of the scalps. It should look just like skin and you shouldn't be able to see the knots. Whereas in comparison to like a mono top, which this one is a mono top with a lace parting. So this would be a mono top where you can see the knots and this is a lace top where you can't see the knots. Um, lace parts are, or lace caps are very realistic looking like this one. However, they, the hair lays a little flatter than a mono top. You can get a lot of volume with a mono top. Uh, the silk lays a little flatter. It's heavier for the most part and, um, it's a little hotter, so it might be a little bit more uncomfortable that way. Um, but it is by far the most realistic looking cap. The third thing to decide is going to be a color, length, and style for your hair topper. Most of them come naturally wavy or straight when they're air dried. If you're looking for something more curly, you're going to have to look specifically for that. 
I also want to mention here, be open to taking it to a stylist for customization, whether that's color or cut. Um, you really want to make sure that you're open to doing that because I promise it will make all the difference in your experience with your hair topper. You may want to measure your bio hair. Just go ahead and part it down the middle and measure it from root to tip. And that will give you a better idea of how long your topper needs to be if you don't want to cut too much off your bio hair. Keep in mind with color that it's easy to darken it, but it's not as easy to lighten it. You, you can technically, but most companies advise against it because it can really damage the integrity of the hair. It's most likely it's already been lightened once through the treatment process before it even gets to you. So if you can plan on going darker, not so much going lighter. I've had a, the experience with going lighter on a topper that made the hair kind of frizzy and it's okay. I, I still would wear it, but it's not going to last as long either. Some companies offer free consultations to help you pick the perfect color. And some companies have a lot of really pretty dimensional colors and others, they're just kind of like straight, um, solid colors that you, if you want dimension, are going to have to take it to a stylist. Uh, but if they have free consultations, take advantage of that because they can make sure that you get the closest match that they have available. Keep in mind that you also have the option of dyeing your bio hair to match your topper hair if necessary. Sometimes that can be a little bit easier. The fourth thing I suggest is to do your homework. Uh, this could include following people on Instagram and YouTube where there's a very supportive and huge hair loss community. And there are people reviewing toppers all the time. Make sure you're taking notes of discount codes. A lot of companies will give these um, influencers free toppers or whatever, and then give them a discount code for their followers. So that's nice to take advantage of. You can follow topper companies so that you can stay up to date with what they have in stock and what's kind of like trending right now as far as technology and cap construction and all things like that. Another option is to go to a wig shop or a salon that carries toppers. Um, if you really want to try one on in person, you, you could look that up and see if there's a place near you that you could go to. Um, this is nice if you're just really, really terrified of buying something sight unseen. <laughs> you can also find some resale groups or accounts on Instagram where pe or even on Facebook where people are buying and selling each other's used toppers. And that might be another option if buying a brand new one isn't in your budget. The last tip I want to give you is to just bite the bullet and buy it. <laughs> I had to do this to myself. I researched and researched and researched, and I finally just told myself, this is this is exactly the phrase I told myself. It's just money. And if I hate it, I'll earn that money back. And you have to kind of realize that either it would be, it could be a total failure, or it could give you the hair of your dreams. So to me, it was worth it to take a chance. And I promise you that with lots of years of experience wearing toppers, I will never not own one. I love my toppers. Another tip is just to make sure that once you do get your topper, that you really are patient and you stick it out. Nobody loves a topper right out of the box. It's going to take some time to get it customized, to get it, um, to practice with it, to, to know how to put it on and blend it in a way that looks good on you and that looks natural and that you're going to like but a lot of people give up way too quickly. So make sure that you're gonna be patient with that and commit to it and then just order the dang thing. <laughs> Hopefully this was helpful to get you started off on the right foot. If you're still overwhelmed or maybe even more so now after going through all of those options, um, just know that I'm offering online hair consultations for people looking for their first topper. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna link a video down below and you can find all the information and the form to get started with that. Otherwise, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope that you find something that's going to make you feel absolutely beautiful and confident.